Hey guys, Chairman here, back with another episode of Local Feature Match with commentary by yours truly. Today we are going to be commentating one of my own matches. That's right, this is round three of one of our new tournaments at 88 Card House, our new White Shorts local in the Bay Area, and yeah, I guess I am on camera and I'm playing, so this will be kind of interesting. I don't usually commentate my own matches. Um, I think that's kind of boring, but I guess at least I'll be able to talk a little bit more in depth about kind of what was going on in my head at the time playing this deck. I am playing 7 Deadly Sins. This is my world's build that I took to the 2022 BCS World Championships in Los Angeles. And honestly, this deck is not very good in a mixed language format. So I built it specifically to beat exactly the English meta at the time. And it's not really good in JP. I've tested it against a lot of JP decks. JP just has too many shenanigans that can out a lot of what the deck is trying to do. So I don't really feel very good playing it into JP decks, but I, I just wanted to give it a shot. Um, I hadn't played this deck in a while, so I thought it would be kind of fun. And my opponent is playing Azure Lane, and uh, his discards are quite intriguing here. He's going first, by the way. Uh, he discards two copies of the Iron Blood event. That event is from the TD. I've never seen anybody play that event, by the way. That is like such a crazy event. Uh, you salvage a climax, and then you have to discard an Iron Blood. I think you somehow it has some kind of like trait lock or something, or like you can't, um, you can't play it if you don't have Iron Bloods or something like that. Uh, yeah, I've never seen anybody play that event. He, this, this guy just discarded two. I have no idea what I'm expecting in this matchup. But I do open... Okay. I mean, I do clock yellow here. Because I just don't have really good red clock at the moment. And I don't think I'm able... I don't really want to be playing a Climax at this early stage in the game. And I top check two here, and they're both clean. So... Knowing that they're both clean, I really don't want to brainstorm or do anything weird. I do have an Escanor that beats over the Cleveland, and so I was thinking, I'll just attack twice. Two clean triggers is pretty good. Um, order it in the best way possible, so Soul Trigger on the front attack. And Direct will be the not Soul Trigger. So yeah, I just thinking, like yeah, just attack two times, two clean triggers. Uh, I'll be able to go pop off next turn probably with my hand. I do have a Brainstorm in hand, I believe I also have a standby. So looking pretty good here. And I at this point, I do realize that my opponent is playing some kind of standby because he's clocked the August. And, and I see a graph here. So there's some kind of standby shenanigans going on. Iron Blend standby maybe is what I'm thinking. Uh, he does play that card. I don't know what that card is called, but that card is really good in standby. Does the top check first. My opponent's also left-handed. This is kind of interesting. I've never really played against a left-handed player. So our decks are both in the same location. It's kind of unusual. I was just checking to make sure that the power could be given to itself, which it can. Uh, he does check a, a a card, like a, a character. Sorry that the deck is a little cut off. I just realized that now. Anyways, uh, he only has one attacker, so I get to keep this Escanor alive, which is kind of crazy. Uh, that usually doesn't happen. And because of that, I actually do clock another yellow here. Now you might be thinking, oh my gosh, he doesn't have red. Well, I'm going to be using the Escanor to get my color here which is one of the coolest things about this Escanor, the fact that you can just clock color from your waiting room, and I have plenty of really good clock targets. So I'm explaining the Escanor, cause he, or not Escanor, I'm explaining the uh, Elaine Brainstorm here, because he's never seen it, so I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, okay, hit two climaxes. Yeah, that's uh, that's really nice to see. Yeah, hitting two climaxes first deck on the Elaine Brainstorm, kind of good. Uh, so I just get to zoom here. Yeah, add two. I, I also bin one of the 2-2 two, two bonds. Excellent. And then Escanor effect here. Go ahead and pay one. Clock my red for color. At this point, I'm playing Yu-Gi-Oh! and not White Shards. Feels pretty good. And go ahead, reveal two here. I believe I get hit both. Yeah, hit an Elaine here. So I'm like, oh, I feel great. I'm definitely going to use this Elaine right now. Because uh, I want to discard stuff. And uh, I, I want to try field here for sure, right? Because I have so much hand advantage now. I just want to discard and like, I was thinking like I could potentially try field and get another. Oh, and I hit another climax off the top on the reveal. I'm like, oh my gosh, I kind of need to brainstorm this because there's really no way good. There's really no good way for me to like 
get this back into my deck. I don't want to trigger it first attack, so I really have to just brainstorm here. And I'm thinking, like, what do I brainstorm? I could kill the Elaine here, but I realize, uh, or I could kill the front row, but I realize I still want to have a place in the back row to stand by out. So I might as well kill the back row here. And then I hit two climaxes. Oh my goodness. Okay, I get to go three more or six more again. So it's like, oh my god. At this point, like my hand size is not the issue. Now I'm like worried about not having enough climaxes left in deck. But as you can see, I am just zooming through this first deck. It feels pretty good here. So yeah, <laughs> I only have like seven cards left. And I do have two climaxes and seven cards, which is pretty good. Uh, which makes me not want to mill out the rest of the deck because yeah, there's two climaxes, that means two chances to cancel. I still do want to leave as many cancels left in my deck. I don't know if that's actually the right play here um, to not refresh. Because I am at 0-5. Having a refresh here is pretty good, but I also do have two climaxes that I kind of want. So I this the reason why I do this, I, I hedge my bets a little bit. So I, I play the Rico, Melio's Rico, to check the top card. If the top card is a climax, I'm 100% just milling out this deck, right? But the top card is not a climax, so I think, you know, like... They're very unlikely that the next two cards afterwards are going to be climaxes So at least I guarantee one clean trigger, which is pretty good And I think at this point I, I want to attack three times and if I don't trigger on my three attacks Then I have two climaxes and four which is absolutely insane, right? Uh, that's like I'm actually probably gonna just stay at level zero here And so I think I just want to play for my outs uh, I just want to play aggressively here because I have so many resources There's really no reason for me to overextend and mill unnecessarily Especially now that I know that the top card and my first trigger is clean, so go ahead and grab a level two just because I can, and then I am probably going to discard a hand size this turn, which is just really funny. Uh, yeah, very explosive turn two here. Honestly, probably the best I could have ever wanted on this turn. Maybe seeing a little bit fewer climaxes would have been nice, but honestly, can't can't complain at all. And uh, so I do go ahead and stand by out the one one. Elizabeth because I want to potentially contest his board. He doesn't have any standby cards out at the moment Which means that this 1-1 one -one is going to be able to do a fair job of contesting um, Like the shitters that standby usually plays in order to like attack with However, this is actually a bit of a misplay It's, it's not a like total misplay, but it is a bit one a bit of one because I, I realized sometime after this that my opponent's playing August, and August freezes two cards, which means I can't run with the Elizabeth. And yeah, kind of realizing that I don't really get to use this Elizabeth. I mean, like, I'm playing standby into Azure Lane standby, and Azure Lane standby is like the perfect anti standby deck because of August specifically. That level two combo is really unfair against other standby decks. Uh, so I kind of have to pray that he does not have the August. Because if he freezes my 1-1 one -one Elizabeth, then not only is she unable to swap with one of my front row, she is also just stuck there for an entire turn. I can't even use her as an attacker, which is uh, very sad here. And then I think at this point, my opponent has shown that he is playing Door, which confuses me a lot because he's playing like Friedrich Door. That's like the level three door combo. Like I've never seen this combo be played. I, I like I think a lot of people have just shake like handshaken that this combo is just not good. So I'm like I actually I'm not sure not sure what that combo does. I know that one of the modes is burn four, but I think it has another mode. But yeah, I'm just like okay, this is a very interesting uh, brew here. But um, yeah, kind of kind of interesting. At this point, my opponent, his field is 3-5 uh, attackers on the side. I think he actually misses power condition for the Laffy, but it doesn't really matter because my Meliodas is just 500 power. But yeah, basically 3-5 on the side and I believe 6-5 in the center, now 7k in the center with the 1-1 one -one back row. And so, looks like he's not going to be doing Algus combo, which allows me to use my Elizabeth to run with a front row card and be able to protect. I can either protect against the, the, the Rico or I can protect the Elaine here. It doesn't really matter. I decided to protect Rico so that he forced to force him to crash the Laffy and have him have to use a uh, Laffy effect on his turn right here because I think that's just the most dis disadvantageous for him. Uh, he also attacks in correct order. He should have attacked Laffy first so that this would have been able to stand by over the Laffy instead of stand by over there. And yeah. I uh, cancel on two, which is really good, but I, that means I'm guaranteed basically to ca take this final swing, unfortunately. Uh, it is for one, and I do 
have to level up, wasn't able to level up at level zero or uh, refresh at level zero. That would have been really amazing, but yeah. I mean, honestly, this is like a still a pretty good position. I'm thinking about using the uh, Escanar here, and I actually think I want to do it because my the top card of my stock is a Climax here, and I although I do take one damage, I do get one card back. I get to clock a Meliodas specifically, uh, so that it'll go into my waiting room at level two, which is ideal. And I am able to refresh with all the climaxes. So yeah, I end up doing it, even though I don't get to reveal two cards because my deck only has one card left. I still think this is a really good play. Just get, being able to refresh eight, still getting some advantage and um, setting up my clock for the next turn. Now uh, I do have the one one uh, Elizabeth ready to contest this two two August, but my opponent is at one five. So have to be a little careful not to hit him to level two. <laughs> and then not be able to remove the August. That'd be pretty sad, but it is it is what it is, I guess. Like, he is pretty far behind. I, I do have a substantial damage lead, so I, I decided to not clock here. I mean, I just have so much hand advantage, and I, I just there's, like, really no reason to clock. And I don't have a Climax in hand, so always do the reveal first when you don't have a Climax. Discard, draw. I don't know. I don't remember if I draw a Climax here. I think I do. Oh, I think I, I'm pretty sure I draw a Climax here, actually. And I remember feeling, like, really good. But I think at this point, I do want to get, uh, do want to brainstorm a little bit just because I am fresh off the, the new deck and my waiting room isn't that set up. And I do want to have potentially more standby targets and just get into my deck a little bit. So I think I would brainstorm here. Yeah, I, I do decide to brainstorm. I think I was also trying to see if I could hit a 1-1 one -one bond so I could contest the middle slot. Because right now I just don't have anything that can kill middle. Um... And I miss on the Brainstorm, which is good. I want to miss here. I think missing here is actually quite a positive thing because that means that there's more Climaxes in the deck to trigger. And I really had a standby. So yeah, at this point, all that I need to do is really just play a Shitter to attack with. Uh, I think I was deciding to put between on like what Shitter to play because I had like a lot of like just random cards I could play at this point. Uh, I think I just end up playing Escanor. I, I could be wrong. I, I think I didn't want to play an Elaine because, yeah, the Elaine would be too. Oh, I guess I do play the Elaine. Um, oh, do I not resolve the Elaine effect? Elaine effect is mandatory. Oh, yeah, here. I do resolve the Elaine effect. So, uh, discard, draw first, reveal. I find a second climax, which is not ideal, but it's not the worst either. Could could be worse. And so I think we, here we just go ahead and play the climax to get one. I don't think I brainstorm anymore. Even though I'm two out at this point, it's still pretty early in my new deck. Or, I mean, I, I still have like, my compression I think is still pretty good. So yeah, go ahead, grab the two, two, and a front attack here. I really hope, oh, but I trigger one. So this, this is really bad, and he takes it. So unfortunately, I'm not able to remove the two, two August. Also the standby is just so poorly positioned here. Uh, first card standby is always not what you want to see. Uh, so I'll go ahead and front attack here. Trigger for one. He takes it direct here for two. Trigger a choice. The order is so bad here. And of course, choice to stock here because uh, my hand is so full. Yeah, if I had triggered choice first and then standby, the turn would have been completely different. Would have been able to remove his 2 2 August. Uh, get another character on the board to fight back with. But at, as it stands, it, it's pretty bad. And also, I, I buried that standby pretty deep. It is now uh, four cards into stock, which is way less than ideal. And yeah, I'm currently out four, All right? So I have a standby hand, standby in waiting room, and two climaxes in stock. Not where I want to be, but still feeling okay. I mean, I'm an I'm a entire level ahead right here. So even though my opponent does get to plus quite a bit here, um, I, I'm just, I just think I'm so far ahead that it really shouldn't matter too much. Um, and then he goes ahead and goes for the graph combo. Uh, if this is the only combo available to him, I think this is fine. Uh, he also does get to pay out that climax, which is really good. But uh, unfortunately, he only has one thing that he can pop on my board, or not pop, but like top deck on my board. And then he reveals a uh, door here, salvages the a rune. I cancel off the top. Pretty incredible that I cancel off the top there. It's kind of kind of insane. Triggers here, second door. Okay, I guess he gets to get get more cards back into his hand. Uh, I think he salvages a Friedrich here. 
not too sure. Let me check. Yeah, salvages Friedrich. Um, direct attack here for two. I take the two, so I'm sitting at one four. Not bad. Direct attack here. It is a counter, and I cancel on three. So at this point, I'm six out. I double cancel. I'm still at level one. Feeling pretty good. All right. Two left in deck. I do need to pay out a bunch of this stock. But I have the 1-0 Elaine in hand, which is the Importante card in this situation. And I, I realize that his graph is giving this Algus power, which is really annoying. Which So th this turn, I my, my goal is to actually kill as much of his board as possible. He did trigger Double Door, which gave him a decent amount of advantage back. But at this point, I, I kind of want to make sure that his advantage doesn't last very long. Go ahead and salvage the Elizabeth, pay one, and now... I'm I'm poised to basically be able to pay out all the climaxes in my deck, which is pretty good, and um, and yeah, he's two three, so yeah, I just want to put a little bit more pressure on him, and I should be in a good place here. So deciding like how to really proceed, I do want to pay one more stock here to pay out the the last climax, and I do want to brainstorm. So I, I'm just deciding what to kill on the brainstorm. Probably killing the one zero Elaine here with the brainstormer, just to also get the additional scry at the end of that effect. So go ahead, brainstorm. Yep, kill off the one zero lane. Perfect. Uh, mill four, I believe that's um, yeah clean. Okay, pretty good. Uh, go ahead and use the lane effect. Mill here, yeah, just to mill down a little bit more. And then pay two, pay out the last climax. And salvage, just whatever you want. I think I salvaged, yeah, I salvaged level zero lane for next turn, I believe. I don't need to play it this turn, I think. Yeah, my hand is still so full, I because I, you know, I didn't even need a, I didn't clock, right? Yeah, I didn't clock because it was double. So I discard here, draw, reveal, add a hand, uh, discard. I believe I discard a climax. Yeah, I think I drew that climax. Very unfortunate. And now there should be one climax left in my deck. But I'm feeling pretty okay. Like, I think I could have milled a little bit more here. I think, oh yeah, I was thinking like, should I mill more or, or not? And I think, well, I have a climax in hand. And, um, oh no, I guess I have, yeah, I have one climax left in deck and I have a climax in hand. And, uh, six in waiting room. So I was thinking here, like, I could brainstorm, but if I brainstorm, I won't be able to get the climax in hand back into my deck. So I was thinking, oh yeah, I should just play the climax here and attack three times. Not likely to trigger, it's one in seven. So then, uh, then, I'll, then after the three attacks, I'll be one in four. Um, and then it's pretty good. And even if I do trigger the climax, not like the end of the world, I'll still be able to stand by out something like a two-two, and um, yeah, and then like it should be fine. I, I should be fine. That's that's basically what I'm thinking. I should be fine here. So go ahead and front here. Uh, this time definitely able to remove the graph. Very important. Get that card out of here. Uh, I'm trying to explain them how this works. Yeah, bottom. So it goes to the top, and then you pay out the bottom. Yeah, and now the August power is. Significantly decreased. Kind of messed up his positioning on his back row. Could have uh, pumped the August a little bit here, just to be, um, I think, bigger. Yeah, I think if his uh, one one support is behind the August, his August is actually bigger than my than my two two bond. But unfortunately, slightly botched the positioning there. But it's okay, not a big deal. Um, and then decides it goes ahead and refreshes here. And at this point, I'm kind of like, okay, well, he's gonna be hit, hitting level three here. It's kind of kind of crazy. Like I'm so far ahead. A uh, front attack here for two, and trigger. And I trigger standby. Uh, he decides to counter, so he is bigger. So, yeah, so it doesn't really matter too much. And then now I have to standby something. I'm not sure what to standby. I guess standby out two two because I'm still level one. Nothing really big I can standby out at this point. Um, it's gonna be for some like yeah for. Three and he cancels. I, I know he refreshes very so he has two door in stock because he triggered that last turn. He just canceled on the third door. So I'm like, okay, that's pretty good. And now I think like do I want a three stock? But I don't think I I don't think it's worth it. Like my stock is pretty low since I did pay for the previous turn just to pay out all my stock and then or oh, I paid five actually because I played the one one. Yeah, but uh, just paid out all my stock, so I don't really want a three stock to put the climax back. I don't think I need it. My deck is clean. It's four clean cards, but I uh, should be good. I'm still 1-4. I was thinking, like, I'm pretty safe here. He levels up to 3. Um, pretty normal. And he plays... Let's see what he plays here. If I remember correctly... 
this is gonna be kind of funny. All right, he plays Friedrich. He has four stock, and I, I'm like, what does that card do again? He plays another Friedrich, and at this point, I realize, oh, he has a door. He has the last door. He has two door and stock. One door he cancels off the top, and I guess he just has the last door in hand. I was like, wow, that's crazy. And I read the Friedrich, and I'm like, oh wait, this has a shuffle back mode. It shuffles back. It shuffles back three. I don't have any classes left in deck. Oh, that's actually kind of bad. <laughs> he plays the last door. I'm just like, oh my gosh. He had the last door? I actually completely disrespected the last door. I did not think he had it. He triggered twice. And like, I just didn't think, I, mean, I didn't even know he had that mode. So I mean, I go ahead and shuffle back three. And I'm like, dude, my deck is just seven clean. It hurts. I, I actually kind of forgot it had that mode. And then, um, we're just not respecting it at all. I just did not think that it would actually come up. So uh, it does come up. How unfortunate. His attack order is not great here. He should definitely direct here first. Uh, just to do the most damage possible on this swing. Because it's guaranteed that I'm not going to cancel this. So uh, decides to... I think he triggers too, right? Yeah, he does trigger. So I level up. I'm 2-1. But I'm like, oh, there's going to be a lot more where that comes from. So he shuffles back, shuffles back three more. And I am still very free. Um, he, he just tells me to shuffle back whatever. So I pick zeros. Honestly, I should have picked... Like, I should have like... Asked him to be more specific because like at this point so now that I've leveled up he he really should be hitting threes into my clock because then like it guarantees that like I don't have access to those threes but I kind of just did zeros because there was just the most zeros in my waiting room at this point and I just didn't want to think I, I was too busy freaking out over the fact that I'm just gonna like take a shit ton of damage here but yeah should be shooting threes to my clock here kind of kind of give myself an unfair advantage by shuffling back zeros but Oh, oh well, you know, I, I, I just ate, ate damage, right? So like, come on, give me a break. Okay, anyways, direct here for the final, I think this was for four, they trigger, I, I, I forgot, it was like three or four here. Yeah, I went from one four to two five, and I am in the process, damage calculation of taking this last swing, and I'm just like, I am not ready for a level three. I am absolutely not ready for a level three. I don't have a single level three in my hand. My hand is like level zeros. I have like a climax in stock. I, I'm a standby deck. I'm supposed to stand by Meliodas out at level two and play the long game and win board and give them hex proof and other shit. And yeah, wow. I, I, I'm not really sure what's happening. All right, refresh and then Yep, and I take the 4 damage, so yeah, E12 that turn, very nice, very fun game of War Shards, and he hits, so 1 Meliodas in Waiting Room, and 1 Meliodas in Clock, very hard for me to have access to Meliodas at this point, it's like very difficult situation, so yeah, went from 1-4 to 3-3, three, three. fun times, very fun times, uh, you can't Encore here just because like, I have an extra 2-2s two in Waiting Room, in, or in hand, and I, I, what am I going to do with them? Like, at this point, it's just better to have two twos on board. They're two soul attackers. I could even sack them with a brainstorm if I really wanted to. I'm thinking, should I clock? I mean, it's pretty doomed at this point. Like, at this point, I've basically accepted that I've lost the game. I'm a pretty realistic person. I've played enough voice shards to know what winning and losing scenarios are. This is definitely a losing scenario. I, like, completely got got by that shuffle back. And I am, uh... Paying for it here, the disrespect for the shuffle back. I just not think about it at all, honestly. This is like, so yeah, we go Escanor here and then hit one. Okay, not bad. Let's see what we get out, out of the top three. I believe I added like a climax. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I think there was a climax in there. Yeah, I think I added the standby. And just like, oh. I have no access to anything. This is like the the one weakness of the deck is like if you're getting a situation like this, you actually have no way to come back. You have like no drop salvage, no drop search, no real way to like tutor or get anything else. I've considered adding drop salvage in the deck. I just think like uh it, it, it's an option. The, the bond, the zero zero bond is like the flex slot. You could like play like Galthers there instead. <laughs> yeah, brainstorm again, miss. Uh, I guess nothing happens. Yeah. I, I do think at some points the deck is missing like reliable like tutor and salvage. The deck does get a hand fix a ton for free, which is like why I feel like it's a little redundant. 
like between the Ricos and the Elaine top check and draws and all that stuff, you basically get to see all your options. But it's like specifically in situations like this where you just need to see like exactly one card and you're like being chilling. So I think I have the I have the choice in hand, but I have no Meliodas. So it's just like, uh, I just can't do anything. It's very smudge. So I think like I'm considering going for a third brainstorm here. Yeah, so I go ahead and play the brainstorm and then play the bond to pump power. I'm trying to get over at least one of the Friedrichs. Um, and then I go ahead and brainstorm again, I believe, just to try to dig for literally just, I just want to see one Meliodas, the three, two. So I think like, even if I see like a zero, zero, like the level zero Rico or like some kind of hand fix, any way to get to Meliodas. Oh, I guess I don't even brainstorm here. Oh, I think I, I think if I brainstorm, I just don't have enough attackers. Wait, that doesn't make sense. No, I should be brainstorming here. I should, I should kill, <clears throat> excuse me. I should be killing my other Elaine here to brainstorm. Hello? <clears throat> Pass me, what are you doing? Okay, there we go. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kill the other brainstorm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it. You have to try to dig. Okay, I hit two. And then I hit the last Meliodas on my deck, I think. I'm pretty sure that's the last Meliodas. Or, or there might be one more. And I'm just like, well, well, this sucks. And at this point, I'm, I'm trying to, like, not die. So it's like, maybe I just mill down the four cards in deck and then... Uh, refresh with the Climax, and like, it's fine. Uh, by the way, I still haven't paid out the top card of my stock, which is a Climax, because I last card trigger standby the previous turn. I have not used a single stock this turn, by the way. Very funny. Very, very hilarious. Okay, anyways. Crash, uh, trigger for three. I think my opponent just, like, triple cancels me here. There's one. I think it is a triple cancel. Standby, of course. What else could it be? Meliodas. Oh, yeah, he cancels that. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Two Climaxes in stock right now. And then for three, and he, tri yeah, he triple cancels me. Yeah. Player diff. Absolute player diff. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty losing. So I, I did this play because I have the 2-1 the counter in my hand. And so, like, at least, like, if I trigger standby, I can, like, get a Meliodas and potentially, like, neck Tussle. So it's like, it's fine. Anyways, my opponent triple cancels me. So like, remember, he triggered, he, he's out, like, what? He triple cancels me, he had two in stock, he canceled off the top, and he had the, he had the climax, right? So that means that he has four door in waiting room, and he just canceled three standby, okay? You guys think about this, right? Because he canceled off the top of the refresh, he had two in stock, so he was going back six at most. Right? He played the door, door comboed me, so now all four doors are in waiting room, and he just triple cancelled, which means he cancelled on three of his standbys. So he's playing a 2 2 split. He has the last standby in hand, and it's the graph. I'm just getting completely player gapped right now. This is an unheard of player diff. His deck is huge, he has the last climax. Uh, he's just better. <laughs> he's just better. So, anyways, yeah, this is pretty done, though. Like, I, he has two, three two soul swings, and he gets a top deck, a bunch of my characters. Like, I'm just not favored to cancel at this point. So, yeah, I, I, I'm pretty done. I, I have understood that the man sitting across the table from me is just, he's just built different. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. So yeah, I think he, I think I canceled this actually, potentially. Do I cancel this? I don't remember. Nope, I don't cancel this. <laughs> he top decks it, and he and then now, I'm just like, now I'm just thinking like, okay, so he fronts there, which is like, I understand he doesn't know the deck, he doesn't know how the minus two soul counter, but the problem here is we're tied, right? My Meliodas is eleven. Um, and then with the counter, it goes up to 13-5. He is also 13-5 because his 1-1 is buffing the Friedrich. And then the graph not only gives 15, but with the combo, it gives an additional 500. And now I'm thinking, do I minus 2 soul? And I'm thinking like, if I minus 2 soul, he clock, he hits this up to the top of my deck. And then that means the top two cards of my deck are clean. He doesn't trigger on his last attack, I'm dead. But if he does trigger, I can I have a chance of canceling on the third attack, right? Because like 
uh, on, on the third. Because if the like basically if the second card of my deck right now is a, is a climax, I am potentially live. However, if I don't if I don't counter, then the second card of my deck still needs to be a climax because he's uh, swinging for two here, right? And then I, I need to cancel that, and then. He top decks it, so then the top card of my deck becomes Meliodas, and then he gets a swing again, and then I need to cancel again. So that means that the third card of my deck right now also needs to be a climax. So I decide to go minus two soul. I want to bank on the th the third card of my deck currently. So second card before third card before, being a soul, being a climax, and he triggering here, but he doesn't trigger, so I, I lose. Yeah, but just just to explain that the, the thought process basically it's the difference between gambling on. The second and third card of my deck being climaxes, which I think is very unlikely, versus the second card of my deck being climax and he soul triggers, which against standby I think that's way more likely. So that's why I decided to minus two soul counter there, even though uh, that meant that <laughs> the top two card of my deck would be clean. Yeah, you know, just banking on him triggering, I think that's just more likely. But it was not meant to be. The third card was clean anyway, so even if that had happened, I would have still died. Anyways, yeah, so. Uh, Pretty crazy game. Uh, this is how you go from winning into losing on one. Basically, in one turn, I take uh, 13 total damage, including the refresh, and I death. I just die. And my opponent just, like, I think just had the hand of the gods, like, in that la latter half. Like, he, I don't know if he was holding the the door through refresh, but, like, yeah, the, the final door into, like, the final standby, just for, just to kill me there. Like, that's... Yeah, that was, that was wild. So, yeah, I think if I had, uh, I mean, my my early game luck was really good, but then I think my mid game, or my level one turns was like very scuffed uh, with the climaxes and just my options here. And I think I should have just milled down a little bit more on the final turn. I think I was kind of greeting a bit, um, trying to keep as many climaxes left in deck, but I, I really should have just milled down more. Um, honestly, though, like in that situation. Yeah, I should have, like, I think the only correct play I could have done was to understand that I was in a position to hit him to level 3. I actually didn't even think I was going to hit him to level 3. He was, like, 2-3, and then he just, like, took all my damage. So, yeah, just to understand I was in a position to potentially hit him to level 3, or at least, like, for him to be able to hit himself to level 3, and then that his combo shuffled back. If I, if I, if I like, internalized that his combo shuffled back, I would have definitely brainstormed again because I had... A second brainstorm to use right I could have brainstormed um, I would have definitely brainstormed again um, made sure to mill out and then uh, on the new deck so that like yeah he can't shuffle back shit but I just a little bit of disrespect I just, just didn't know that card did dude like uh, I've never played that card in Azure lane I play I play a lot of Azure lane never played that card I think that combo is not very good but like yeah and then uh, it kind of played paid for it so I mean I think that's that's kind of the beauty of Weiss in a way though is that like, yeah, there's just so many things you can play around, so much stuff you can do. Every time I do commentary, I always learn something new, um, analyzing these games. So that was pretty fun. Yeah, but anyways, congratulations to my opponent. I believe he went undefeated that night. So pretty good. Something, something must have worked in his deck. Or, I mean, with that kind of luck, I, I think you play a lot of decks and still come out on top. Anyways, that does it for this time. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode and this commentary on this match uh, let me know if you guys have any questions comments feedback or any ideas for future content and that's it for this time i'll see you guys on the next one peace